Welcome back. 11 African heads of state have appealed for $100 billion in hardship funding to help their economies out of the crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Lockdowns, reduced travel and trade have thrown sub-Saharan Africa into recession. While most African nations haven't reached the peaks of fatalities and infections seen in other parts of the world, there are concerns that a third wave of the coronavirus could get worse with faster spreading variants driving infections. The leaders are seeking $100 billion for the period of 2022 to 2025 from the International Development Association, which is an arm of the World Bank Group that offers loans and grants to some of the world's poorest countries. The funding would be a top-up from a previous disbursement of $82 billion agreed in 2019. Let's discuss this further with Eric Kaku. He is the CEO of Entrepreneurial, Entrepreneurial Solutions Partners in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. He joins us live via Zoom from there. So, Mr. Kaku, $100 billion for hardship funding. That is what these 11 countries are asking for. But even if they were to get this money, we still have vaccination rates very low in the continent. And this pandemic that is still raging, would they be able to achieve what they are hoping to? Listen, let me begin by clarifying a couple of things. First of all, the, the $100 billion is not just for African countries. As a matter of fact, of the beneficiaries, we only have 39 African countries, 20 countries from Asia, and the rest of them from the rest of the world. So we are looking at African leaders taking leadership for the global south. That's the first point. Second, it's not Africa also asking for the $100 billion. As a matter of fact, it's the World Bank saying that they have spent $55 billion, which is more than two-thirds of the money they had raised in 2019 between April 2020 and June 2021 because of COVID. So the World Bank is asking for more resources to help the world's poorest countries, of which only one in two are African countries. Now, your point around the low vaccination rate is a very important one. Indeed, the vaccination rates in Africa are low and the pandemic is still ongoing. And to me, though, those are reasons why those resources are needed. And those are the reasons why we actually need to really uh, put the money on the table. The challenge then becomes, how do we relaunch those economies? To me, it's really going to be important to think beyond the money and use the resources to help entrepreneurs, to protect climate, and to also empower youth and women. Right. So of these countries then in Africa that, 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 should, should, that should benefit from these fans, we obviously have different needs per country. And we have countries such as Mozambique, for instance, Burkina Faso, Niger, whose needs are quite different from the other countries in the sense that we've got jihadist attacks that are presently going on in those countries. So how much worse is it then for such countries? Listen, I think it's extremely helpful because I think any time we have poverty in a country, any time we have social needs which are being, not being met, we create room for the jihadists to actually come in and uh, do the deeds. So to me, what we have to do actually is to find a way to combat uh, those jihadists by putting in place programs and solutions which are going to really help uh, young African men and women alike find a better way to occupy themselves than being uh, in the hands of those jihadists. So it's critical that we are able to put in place those resources so that the countries which are being attacked right now can really find solutions. It's also important that there are programs which uh, are put in place to avoid a scenario where uh, more countries fall prey to jihadism, which is really what is happening on the continent right now. And what policies uh, and investments should these governments be looking at to implement in order to spur faster and stronger recovery? Look, we actually did a survey at uh, ES Partners uh, in around 10 countries across the continent where we asked the entire private sector, right, micro entrepreneurs and SMEs alike, what the challenges are. What we found is that more than two thirds of businesses in all countries are reporting serious disruption in their work. Number two, we also find that most of those businesses have to actually let go of people and or reduce income. So to me, whatever we do as countries, it's very important that we are able to put entrepreneurs at the center stage of what's going on 
and create programs which are going to help those entrepreneurs to relaunch their businesses. The second thing which is important is to also put in place programs in the social area. I think programs around vaccines are critical, but beyond that, we have to use the resources to really invest both in healthcare and education, because those sectors are amongst the ones which are the most badly affected by the pandemic. Last but not least, we also need to make sure that we continue to invest in the sort of infrastructure space, because this infrastructure is actually important to sustain the long-term development trends of the continent. And you mentioned that this was the first time with COVID that Africa was actually having a, a, a sub-zero rate of growth because of the pandemic. So we really need to make sure that we are able to rebuild back our economies better.